Hello, thank you so much for coming to this video today. I really appreciate it. This is my Cardano weekly recap. I release these once a week. It's usually later in the week, Wednesday through Saturday, depending on when the news comes out. But I have a lot of great information for you today. Um, we're going to be talking about the Cardano Summit, you know, when it's scheduled, where it's going to be at, uh, if we're going to have any part of that. We're also going to be talking about a big loss of ETH staking. We're actually going to be taking a look at ETH staking and some of the issues with it and seeing if, you know, Cardano solves these issues uh, or if it has the same issues as some of the ETH staking as well. We're also going to be talking about a new partnership between IOG and Orion Protocol. Uh, it's actually very cool. It's something that integrates both centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges in the, the same, like, wallet. It's very cool. We're going to be looking at that. We also have some news from John O'Connor about offline transactions on the Cardano blockchain. Um, and that's that's really about it. We might have a couple little things in there. I might sneak in there. But if you guys do want to support this channel, the easiest way you can do that is just by clicking the like button and commenting down below. If you also share it to your friends, it helps. But in also finishing the whole video, uh, it really does mean the world to me and also delegating to Bloompool. Uh, we have Bloom through Bloom 6. Bloom is my stake pool, and we actually minted the eighth ever block on the Cardano blockchain minted by stake pool. So we've been here from the beginning and we'll be here till your end. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. As a uh, stable coin, this is probably in reference to the stable coin paper. Excuse me. Uh, probably in reference to the stable coin paper uh, that I announced. Uh, it's still on target for the end of the month. We're right now writing some Isabel proofs. We're doing some other cool things. And we will, of course, publish that publicly and put it either on ePrint or some other archive. And uh, that will be publicly available in July. So uh, you guys are really going to like it. And we're actually looking at, at one of the six development firms that's currently deploying things on Cardano to give them a fixed cost contract to actually implement that in target for the uh, Gogan launch. So that was some awesome news to hear, to hear that IOHK is actually, you know, writing a paper about stable coins. They've mentioned this in the past, but not only are they writing a paper about a stable coin on Cardano, they're actually going to task one of the six companies that are working for them, contracting for them, that are actually using Plutus to develop for Cardano. They're going to task them with building a stable coin and releasing it around the launch of Gogan. So that's, that's awesome to hear. You know, I'm interested in seeing, you know, what they research, what they, what comes from their research, um, because there is a lot of value in a stable coin. And what is that value? Well, crypto markets are very volatile. You know, I've watched ADA go from three cents to $2 and 40 cents in less than a year, right? So that's volatility. So what do you do to preserve some of that value in these times? You know, who knows how long a bear market's going to be or when the price is going to go up again. You know, sometimes you have to hold some stable value for your business or for your person, or you may just want to buy the dip. But what's very cool is you'll actually be able to have that stable coin in your Daedalus or your Roy wallet next to your ADA. And eventually, you know, when Gogan's released, you'll be able to go to a website called you know, sundayswap.io or you know, liquid swap, whatever it may be called, bloom swap. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but whatever website it may be, and you'll be able to take your ADA and swap it for the stable coin made by IOG and hold that stable value. And it'll not touch a centralized exchange. It'll not touch anything. Just on the Cardano blockchain, you'll be able to swap your ADA for a stable coin and hold that stable value in your wallet. And you might be asking, what is it backed up by? Well, that really depends. You know, there's some stable coins like uh, USDC that are backed up by a dollar. There are some co stable coins like USDT that are backed up by nothing. And then there are other stable coins like DAI uh, that are backed up by an algorithm written. And that's what I suspect this stable coin to be is, you know, a couple assets held into a contract that allow this stable coin to hold the value. Um, if you're more curious about this, I will talk more and more on it in the future. We'll take a look at this coin. We'll take a look at the paper uh, and see what they're actually doing. But the second thing I wanted to talk about in this part of the video is the Gogan Summit that was just announced. It's going to be in the third week of September. Uh, I'm definitely going to be there. It's going to be a hybrid event. Some people will be in person, but it'll also be released for all of you online. And I would like to be a part of that. Um, I would like to pick up some gear, you know, some mobile gear, some streaming stuff. And I would like to stream that event for you guys. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, comment Big Pay, Big Pay Live Watch Party uh, or something of those sorts. If you guys would like to see me there in person recording that for you guys and then doing commentary, releasing podcasts as well, it'd be very fun to do that. And I would love to do it. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know.
Um, and I would love to see you there too. We're going to be setting up a bloom booth um, if they have booths there. Uh, and then we'll be giving out some free merch to anybody in attendance. We'll try to get some really cool stuff. Uh, and then maybe we'll do some live podcasts where people can kind of watch as long as they're quiet. May have to get some pop filter mics or something. But, but yeah, that's the part of this video. Let's go on to the next part. 63,000 ETH were lost. And many think this is from a company called Fireblocks. And what Fireblocks is, is they're a holding company. And they're a holding company for over 400 different companies. So, you know, let's say Bloom wanted to hold someone else's funds. Uh, well, you know, we don't have the legal uh, ability to do that. So what they do is they use a company like Fireblocks, pay them a fee for doing so. Uh, but there's been this, you know, this news release that came out that 63,000 ETH were actually lost. They lost the keys to them. And these were actually staked ETH. And it was a big percentage of the network staked ETH. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge loss. 63,000 ETH is a lot of money. I mean, I think that's probably you know, over $100,000 now. And you know, how did this happen? Well, first, let's break down how ETH staking actually works. So to actually stake ETH to a node, you need 32 ETH you know, to fill it up. And that's the only way it works. You know, it's not like Cardano where, you know, I build the node for, for you. I run the servers. I do this full time. You don't have to worry about anything other than delegating to my pool and earning those rewards. ETH is actually different. You know, the person that creates the node actually has to have 32 ETH to fill up the node to earn those staking rewards. So the only people that can actually earn the staking rewards are the people with the ETH to fill up the nodes and the people that know actually how to operate the nodes. What does that remind you of? Kind of like proof of work. The only people that are earning the interest rate are the people that, you know, are running the miners. Well, Cardano is different. You know, you are earning that percentage for delegating to my pool. Um, and I really do think that's a, that's a pro. You know, I think that there, that offers multiple advantages for Cardano. And, and one of those advantages is, um, you know, you, you're getting paid. Everyone's getting paid. And it also makes you very excited about you know, Cardano and staking and telling more people about it. Um, whereas this, you know, it's only those actors that know how to run the nodes uh, that can earn the rewards. So who's going to be the middleman there? Well, that's what they were trying to do here. There's going to be a middleman, but the issue is you have to give up your funds. On Cardano, when you stake to Bloom, I don't get your ADA. I can't take it. I can't do anything with it. But on ETH, you know, for us to stake you know, your ETH to a node, I have to have control over your ETH. And that's what happened here was a lot of people all put their ETH together, you know, to a staking company, to stake in. They actually contacted Fireblocks for help. You know, the company that was doing this, the company that lost the 63,000 ETH, and they weren't a part of Fireblocks main services. And Fireblocks is actually a custodian for um, Celsius as well. Many names that you've heard of actually use Fireblocks. And many are coming out and saying that Fireblocks actually was the cause of this issue, uh, but this is actually not true. Uh, they were not using Fireblocks as infrastructure. Um, you know, they said, look, the keys were generated by the customer and stored outside the Fireblocks platform. So it was not Fireblocks that had this issue. But although there was no issue with Fireblocks, I want to take a moment to talk about, you know, how important it is for you to understand that Celsius and all these other staking platforms, when the crypto is not yours, it can be stolen. You know, there's no FDIC insurance on Celsius or Binance or Coinbase. You know, if you have your ADA on an exchange, you can lose it and you won't be paid back for it. Whereas you can actually earn a return for having your ADA in your own wallet and delegating it to a pool and decentralizing the network at the same time. Um, so it's very important that you know those risks because if you're going to have your ADA, you know, on Celsius or Coinbase or any of these, you better be earning a percent that justifies that inherited risk because I can offer you with Bloom 5%. There are many other SBOs that can offer you 5%, but Celsius, what, you know, they're going to add Cardano soon or ADA soon. And it's probably going to be, you know, seven to 10%, maybe even less than that. And that extra three to 5% is not worth it in my opinion, but I'll let you guys make that own decision for yourself. John O'Connor, the director of African operations for IOG. He had a new tweet that got me excited. He says, I just saw an offline transaction demo for Cardano, including ADA and other native assets that kind of blew me away. Support for any Android phone 
of the last five years, a few things to work out, but the use cases are crazy. Go input output I or HK. They're not in Hong Kong anymore, but it always messes with me. So what does that mean? What he's saying is that you can actually take two phones that are both not connected to the internet, two devices, and complete an offline transaction. So essentially transferring the private key to the next user, but not holding the other private key. That has huge use cases for when you just can't connect to the internet or you're in a region uh, that doesn't have the internet. And that's very important for, for Africa. You know, uh, Before World Mobile uh, goes through and connects the unconnected, uh, it's very useful for us to have the ability to send ADA offline. You know, that's huge. My internet went out the other day and I thought I was lost. I was like, where am I? How can I work? How can I do anything? So it's cool to see that they're actually looking at, you know, an offline way of doing this. And if you guys have been in Cardano for years, you know, this is something that we always aspired for, you know, in 2017, this is something that Charles talked about. So great news.